In chapter two, we covered the first three steps in the accounting cycle. We learned that transactions are recorded in the general journal in the form of journal entries. And then the second step is we post to the general ledger. And then the third step in the accounting cycle is preparing the first trial balance, the unadjusted trial balance. Chapter three picks up where chapter two left off. So that unadjusted trial balance is prepared at the end of the period. So chapter three covers the things that you do at the end of the period called the adjusting process. Okay. So let's first start off talking about why we have to make adjustments. So the cash basis of accounting, we have not been working with the cash basis of accounting. The cash basis of accounting means that you record revenue when you receive the cash and you record expenses when you pay the cash. So this is going to be used, could be used by small businesses. It could be used by attorneys, physicians, real estate agents, because cash basis is not that much different from what we're doing, which is the accrual basis. And for tax purposes, you're a cash basis. And so that's why a small business, if you're just recording your, you know, keeping your um, accounting information and the only place you record it is in your income taxes, then it would make sense to be on the cash basis. But the accrual basis is what we follow under GAAP. So we've been talking about the accrual, accrual basis since uh, the chapter one. We learned that under GAAP, we record revenue when it is earned and it's earned by performing services or delivering goods we'll learn um, in the next in chapter five expenses are recorded when they are incurred okay. so this is why we have accounts receivable and accounts payable and an unearned revenue and prepaid expenses because we're following these rules of gap that are the accrual basis of accounting so let me just show you an example for the rationale, why the accrual basis is used. So here's an example of a company that's been on the cash basis of accounting. And their sales every year have been even, right? Very stable, 60,000 credit sales every year. However, in year one, they only collected 20,000 from their customer. So even though they perform services for 60,000, they're only reporting 20,000 of revenue. Year two, they collected 70,000, and then year three, they collected 90,000. So even though their business has been steady, it looks like year one, revenue was real low, and looks like year three, it was great. Their salaries would be deducted each year, but now the insurance, they paid for a three-year insurance policy. So they deducted, all of the insurance expense in year one because they were under the cash basis. When they paid the insurance premium, they just deducted the 12 in, in expenses. So it looks in year one, look at it, it looks like they had a big loss. Looks like they did much better in year two. It looks like they did great in year three when really their business was pretty steady. So the cash basis of accounting doesn't give the clearest picture of how the business did. So that's why the accrual basis of accounting is what GAAP tells you to do. A couple other concepts that play into the rationale for adjusting entries is the time period concept. So we do our financial reporting for a period of time, right? We will have monthly statements, but the big reporting is the annual statement and so we have the company has a fiscal year we all think of the year begins on january 1st and goes through december 31st and a lot of companies have that same calendar year but some companies have a different year their fiscal year could be different um, so for example retail businesses none of them will have a december 31st year end uh, christmas is their busiest time if you're a retailer so no one has a December 31st year end. You're every, everything's going on. You have, um, you know, maybe 40% of your sales are in the month of December. And then between 
you know, Christmas and uh, New Year's is all the returns, people returning Christmas presents. So it was very, very busy. So companies aren't going, going to want to write in January, do all their financial reporting. A lot of them do have January 31st as a year end, though, because what your, your period ends and then you uh, wrap up all of your accounting information. If you know anyone who's an accountant, they're very busy at the beginning of the month because they're closing last month. And so same, the big close would be at the end of your fiscal year. So if you end in January 31st, February is your busy time and February is going to be a slow time for a retailer. So anyway, companies will choose a fiscal year end and then that's a fiscal year they use every year. And it's very important that you record all of the re revenues and expenses that happened in that time period. And when I say it happened in that time period, that means with revenue, here's our, our revenue recognition principle we've been working with. We record revenue when the delivery of, of the goods or the services have been performed. That's what we've been working with. But technically, we have to have these other pieces, persuasive evidence of arrangement for customer payment, price needs to be fixed or determinable, collection is reasonably assured. And so most of the time you're not going to perform services unless these other three things are in place. And so we record revenue for the actual selling price that we're charging for our goods or services. And then as far as expenses go, we have a matching principle. We record the expenses when they have been incurred, right? Not when they've been paid for. And it's called the matching principle because we match the expenses with the revenues they help to generate. Okay. So this is going to come into play when we talk about um, some things like depreciation and bad debts expense in a later chapter. Okay. So these adjusting entries, what we're learning in this chapter, as I said, we're picking up right at the end, right after chapter two has happened, right after we've prepared that trial balance, and we are going to make adjusting entries to record transactions that have occurred in this period. So revenue that has been earned or expenses that have been incurred, it's happened in this period, but we haven't reported it. Uh, we haven't recorded it yet for various reasons. They're not recorded daily, they incur as time passes, or for any other reason, they have not been recorded. So what we're doing is we're standing on the last day of the period, we're looking back and saying, okay, is there any other revenue or expenses from this period? Because if there are, we got to get them re recorded now in the adjusting entries. So when you're making an adjusting entry, you are either recording a revenue or an expense. It's one or the other. It can't be both in the same adjusting entry. So I always tell students that's the first thing you do is you look at and ask yourself, is this a revenue or an expense? The other side of the journal entry is going to be either an asset account or a liability account. So we've got four types of adjustments. To our recording revenue, to our recording expenses. So we've got accrued revenue and deferred revenue. We've got accrued expenses and deferred expenses. And when we're talking about accrued, accrued revenue and accrued expenses, the cash transaction is going to happen in a future accounting period. Deferred revenue and deferred expenses the cash transaction has already happened. So that's the next step. The first step I said was to ask, am I dealing with a revenue or an expense? The second step is to ask yourself, did the cash transaction already happen or is it gonna happen later? That's how you can determine if it's a deferral, if the cash transaction already happened, or an accrual, if the cash transaction is gonna happen later. You will not record cash in an adjusting entry for that reason. Either the cash already happened or it's not going to happen until later. It does not happen at the adjusting entry. And so that's something students need to get used to because so many of our transactions during the period involve cash, but you will never use cash in your adjusting entries. So we've got the three steps, right? Is it a revenue or an expense? 
Did the cash transaction happen in the past or is it going to happen in the future? That tells you if you've got a deferral or an accrual. And then the third step, uh, com computing the amount of the revenue earned or the expense incurred. A lot of the problems that we're going to be doing, the, the amount's going to be given to us. But we'll talk about how you determine the amount. So let's just go over these four adjusting, every, uh, adjusting entries. The revenue has been earned, so we know we're crediting revenue. And you'll put an amount in the credit column. But what's our debit? So let's think about it. The cash will be received in the future. So we did the work in this period. We're not going to collect on it till next period. So that means the customer owes us at the end of the period. Right? If the cash is going to be received in the future, we know that that means it's an accrual. It's an accrued revenue. So we're crediting revenue. Our debit is going to go to accounts receivable for accrued revenue. The next type of adjusting entry, the revenue is has been earned. The cash was already received. So we received it in the past. So that means it's a deferred revenue. So we have did the work. We've got to credit our revenue account. What are we going to debit? Well, what do we call it when we get the cash before we do the work? We call that unearned revenue. So when we do the work, later after we've received the cash, we record the revenue with a credit. We debit unearned revenue because our liability account is going to go down, right? Unearned revenue is a liability. You get the cash before you do the work. You owe services to a customer. So that's when we credited unearned revenue when we got the cash. Well, then later when we do the work, we don't owe it anymore. We debit unearned revenue and we credit our service revenue because now we've earned that revenue. Let's take a look at our expenses. The expense has been incurred, but the cash will be paid later. So we're going to debit the expense. We're going to credit a payable. We've incurred the expense in this period, but we're not going to pay for it till next period. So we got to credit the liability payable because we owe for it. And then the last one, the expense was incurred, but the cash was already paid. So we're debiting an expense. And let's think about what we credit, right? So the expense was, in, has been, was incurred, the cash was already paid. So now we're dealing with a deferred expense. And when we paid for an expense before we incurred it, that's when we debited the prepaid expense account. So what's happening here is we're using up that prepaid expense. So our credit is going to be an asset, prepaid expense. Supplies is treated like a prepaid expense. And then a new term we're going to learn in this chapter is contra accounts. So we're going to learn about a contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. So that's, good. that's a, a new twist we're getting in this chapter. So that's the theory behind adjusting entries. And then in my next video, we're going to talk about these categories. We've got deferred expenses, deferred revenue, accrued expenses, accrued revenue. And we're going to learn what those adjusting entries are.